So today we've got a problem with the bilge pump. It's been making some really strange noises and it's taken a long time to suck the, the bilge water up um, from the bilge. The noise it was making, it was kind of sucking a lot of air, or seemed to be sucking a lot of air. It would start going off at strange times as well. So I suspect the non-return valve isn't working because I think all of the water that's collected up in the pipe is then draining back down and causing it to trigger again. All in all, not a good sign, so I'm gonna to have to take it apart and take a look what's what's going on in there. access is really tricky it's kind of it's bolted onto the bulkhead but the motor actually covers the bolts um, what's a bit strange is this there is a bit of an adaption going on here there's like a reduction pipe here it goes down from maybe a 38 mil to a 25 mil or something I'm not sure why that is or whether that was done originally I'm just going to disconnect it by the lower one so maybe I can take a look in there and see where this leaks coming from make sure that Jubilee clip doesn't end up down the bilge actually there's another non-return valve in there is wide open so that's probably part of the problem as well. So I think collectively with the non-return valve in the strum box and the non-return valve in the pump, the water is probably draining back down into the bilge. This is where I could really do with a ratchet spanner. This is going to take forever. Check back in two days and I might have this off. So there you can see even more clearly now how knackered that that valve is. I thought it was a Henderson one because there's a Henderson service kit on board. So I'm not even sure what that make is. So I'm just hoping that those diaphragms will fit. Let's see. This looks like a problem as well. The flap Looks like it's swelling up and it's catching on the edge there, which means it probably isn't closing properly either. So we've got two valves here that aren't working. I've got a new one in the service kit. So I'll just replace that one. Yeah, this is weird because this came out that way, but when I've looked in the diagram, it looks like it goes that way. And it is a much better fit that way as well. So we'll see how it goes. If it's not, I'll have to take it apart again. diaphragm actually looks okay. When I first looked at it I couldn't see a thing but when you start bending it around there it is and it's amazing how much water can get through that little that little split. Hmm. Okay new one talk about that as well. The o-ring from the inspection caps looking a bit kind of a bit of tatty so I might as well replace that as well and that there is a much tighter seal oh yeah it's much tighter but I also noticed that these old screws are a bit threaded and uh, I think they've been over tightened a few times so uh, luckily I found some new ones in the service pack as well so I think that should stop that little leak that we had before. So what I've done is rigged it up on the back of the helm here um, and cut some pipes to length. So I've got a bucket of water down here and uh, a sort of return outlet that's going back into the bucket. So the next step is to cut some wires, so I'm going to attach it to the, the battery. Uh, on the AMELs we've got a 24 volt system, so the batteries are set up like this. We, we actually had the batteries uh, replaced last September, so we replaced the old Victron 90 AGMs with uh, 110 AGMs. Um, 
So to get powers, we've removed the terminals as well. So I've got the positive and negative terminals here. So to get 24 volts off, I just need to put the crocodile clips on the terminals and then I can run the pump outside. I'm going to put this on on the uh, tester pipe to try it out, but the valve seems to be okay. Sucking a lot of air, and there's the leak there. Those screw holes, they're not tight, so I need to get some sick effects in there to uh, make an airtight seal in it. But at least it's pumping, which it wasn't doing before. I think these valves have been changed that often that these screws, the screw threads are no longer biting in so it's not forming an airtight seal so there's water getting out and there's air probably getting in as well. It technically is a valve problem but it's not actually the valve itself, it's the screws. You want to tighten them up here, they do actually get a grip. Maybe I need to support it a bit better underneath, maybe push from the bottom as I'm putting it in and it might get a grip. I'm just going to put a bit of Sikaflex and there's holes. So I let that dry for 12 hours because I wanted to get a real good seal so there's a moment of truth. Top tip for reusing cable ties, if you get a small enough electrical screwdriver you can just trip the tab in the cable tie and it'll slide straight off. So you've got a reusable cable tie. Right, so today is our favourite maintenance job ever, isn't it Woody? Just service the bilge pump, and so we've got some of the pipes out anyway so we thought we might as well carry on and get the rest of the pipes out. There is one main bilge where all the water goes into. Obviously, because of all the stuff that's going in there, it does get quite disgusting and it builds up soap suds and all sorts of things, you can imagine. Obviously, the black water goes into its own tank. Because it's not just a, a waste bilge, it's got the bonding strap which connects the steel bulb on the bottom of the keel to the rest of the bonding system. So that needs checking as well because there's a copper strap which runs down inside. Um, and last time we checked it was broken so we replaced it so I just want to give that a, a check as well but it does mean just scraping out all of the gunk from the bottom of the bilge um, before we can actually see it so it's, it's a horrible job but it has to be done so we can tick off a few jobs by doing this by clearing it out we can check the bonding strap um, I can service the bilge pump and we can clean the bilge as well so it's quite awkward the gap of where it is is difficult to get into and it's quite deep. What are you detaching there? So this is just the uh, power to the float switch. So when the float switch gets a certain point, it trips it here and then it kicks the automatic bilge pump going. And then this is a very low tech float switch. So it's basically a four inch waste pipe with a float in the middle and the float is connected to a, a line here and that line is connected to a trip switch there. Less to break, isn't it? Yeah. Right, this is the AML float switch. <laughs> it's not actually the pump, it's the float switch, but it's all part of the same thing and it makes it work. Works, isn't it, with that? I'm just mopping out the last of it dregs down the bottom there. So this is our new instrument. We've got a, a bent wallpaper scraper there and a toilet brush on the other side. So there you can see the bonding strap. It's a bit loose but it's still in place. So that's the keel bolt and that's the bonding strap there connected to it. Got the bonding strap. And there you can see the bottom of the strum box has fallen off the bilge pump. It's not as bad as it was last time actually. This is the bottom of the strum box. Move that back. A bit of a cable tie there and, and some twig. I don't know where that's come from. 
So apart from the screw holes leaking air and water, um, which was obviously making the pump really inefficient and occasionally not working at all, as the grill had come off the strum box, I think these had been occasionally working themselves into the non-return valve and stopping the uh, water from staying in the pipe. So basically the water was going up the pipe and coming straight back down again. And that will explain why it was only working intermittently. So actually I've made a bit of a discovery. The, um, the strum boxes, the whale strum boxes, use the same non-return valve with a square end as the Henderson 5 pumps. Previously I had to buy the whole service kit at 60 euros in Parma just to get that non-return valve. So basically I can buy a whole one of these for 17 euros instead of buying the whole service kit for this for 60 euros and use the non-return valve out of the strum box in this Henderson 5 pump. So that's a bit of a discovery, save a few quid. I'm just filling the uh, pipe with water. I know it's a self-priming pump, but this just helps it on its way. And uh, make sure that the valves don't burn out before it gets water to it. This is the float switch here, so let's give it a try. So thanks for watching, thanks in particular to our patrons who keep us going. If you found it useful, give the video a thumbs up. If you want to buy me a coffee or beer, you can do that by following the Mothership links to the PayPal page or the Patreon page in the description below.